How are the macro charts shaping up? Where is Bitcoin likely to go next? And will we still see an altcoin season? These are questions we're answering in today's video. Let's dive in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the short-term price action, discussing what is happening with Bitcoin as we speak, where Bitcoin is likely to go next, what the technical and structural levels are suggesting, and both the bullish and the bearish scenarios. We'll also be taking a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap, the total altcoin market cap, the potential for an altcoin season, and the macro charts. So before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that con button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us over on Telegram. It is the first link in the description below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you were interested in taking your trading to the next level, join us over on VIP. We post trading setups with exact entry prices, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. Alongside this, you'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, trading charge and education chat, trade setup, news, help, and daily video chat. If you're interested in joining over 600 members in the VIP community, contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel by clicking my name or click these links to find out more information. Without further ado, let's dive in. So starting on that market data, how are we currently looking? 24 hour volume is down 7%, sitting at 116 billion. 24 hour liquidations are down 25%, sitting at 115 million. Of the 115 million in liquidations, 72 million have come from short positions and 42 million have come from long positions. Taking a brief look at the last 24 hours of price action, we can see Bitcoin has bounced exactly from that $60,800 region. As we discussed in yesterday's video, we told you guys this was a key area of support we were watching for a bounce and we saw a perfect bounce from that level. We saw with that bounce a break of that downtrend on the RSI signifying a positive momentum shift. And as we know, momentum is leading to price action. So once we saw that positive momentum shift occur all the way down over here, we saw the price action eventually continue upwards. And with that continuation, we saw a break out of that couple day long downtrend. So the price action is looking pretty good over here, currently sitting above that prior level of support, then turn to resistance. We have broken above that level and now retesting. We'll come back and discuss what is happening here later in today's video. So overall, a pretty good move for the bulls in the last 24 hours. Moving over to the broader markets, the DXY has broken back down underneath that uptrend again, this two to three month long uptrend now, still acting as a key level of resistance. As we've said, we are expecting a continuation lower over here. Only if we are able to break above that 106 level, that prior double top, will we then expect a continuation upwards? Any correction here on the DXY should be bullish for both traditional markets and for, again, other risk assets such as cryptocurrency, if we do see that continuation upwards, we will likely see corrections across the board. Now, the DXY is very susceptible to movement based on upcoming CPI data, and we do have CPI data coming out very, very soon. In fact, the CPI data is scheduled to come out on the 15th of May. So we do have a couple days now, it's about five days remaining. And again, if our CPI data comes out bearish, we could see the DXY rally, we could see traditional assets pull back. If the DX, if the CPI data comes out on par or bullish, we are likely going to see large moves in the market. And attributing to one of the factors that we have seen a lot of sideways consolidation over the last few weeks, I feel like the market is on edge waiting for the current CPI data as a consequence of what was discussed in the prior Fed meeting. So a lot of people are kind of on edge waiting and I don't believe the market's going to move too aggressively in the lead up or build up to that CPI data. So CPI data is gonna play a big role in determining the overall risk climate moving into the next interest rate decision. So moving over to the broader markets, we can see S&P 500 and the Dow Jones I've seen very, very green weeks with strong bounces from those respective high time frame supports at 5,000 on the S&P and 37.7 to 
38,000 on the Dow Jones. We can see strong, strong rallies pushing close to that $40,000 region on the Dow Jones and 5,250 region on the S&P 500. Again, guys, we are expecting macro continuations upwards. We are very much macro bullish, provided we remain above 5,000. It's only if we close a weekly candle underneath these levels do we expect macro continuations lower. Until then, expecting macro moves to potentially as high as 6,000 on the S&P 500 if we do break above that prior high point. On the Dow Jones, again, we only expect macro continuations downwards if we break underneath that 37.7 region. That would send us into a macro downtrend. Until then, macro, macro bullish over here, and we are expecting strong movements upwards if we break over that prior high. Let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. A quick word from our sponsor, BitUnix, before we do. I'd like to introduce our partner, BitUnix. BitUnix is a global, non-KYC, no country restriction exchange, making it a perfect exchange to trade on if you're from the USA, from Canada, the Netherlands, or just prefer to trade without KYC. This exchange is a futures and spot exchange with over 200 different trading pairs and some of the lowest fees in the game. If you sign up with my link down below, you'll get access to 15% off your trading fees as well as an exclusive reward center where you can claim up to a multitude in USDT prizes. So go ahead and sign up with my link down below for 15% off and I'll see you in there. Okay guys, let's jump over into Bitcoin. So starting on Bitcoin's price action, specifically focusing on the short term. Like we said at the start of the video, the last 24 hours have been strong for Bitcoin. We have seen two things. We've seen a bounce from our range low support at 60 to 68,000. This is significant, of course, because the range low support is going to be that high time frame range low of that two month long horizontal consolidation. We can see a 60 to 60,800 uh, level is right between these two orange lines. Not only have we bounced from that region, we've actually established now, okay, we've established a higher low. So we have this clear uptrend developing from this region, which is a very, very healthy thing. It's a good thing. It's showing us we do have buyers still stepping in at this level of high time frame support. Now, if we zoom down to the shorter time frame, we have seen another really fantastic thing, and that is the price action was able to break above not only that horizontal area of resistance, which was once support, but of course, the current short-term downtrend as represented by our diagonal trend line as a consequence of momentum flipping positive as we discussed in the intro. So we've seen a whole multitude of positive things occur on the short-term and on the high time from Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. The big question is, are they going to be able to continue to strength and continue to push the price action upwards? If so, where to? Or will this fall short and are we going to see corrections? So let's go ahead and discuss on the higher time frame really quickly and then jump into those questions. So currently the high time frame charts are still very much bullish. We've said this already. We are technically bullish on the higher time frames from a trend based perspective whilst we remain above our yearly uptrend. This yearly uptrend is going to be a representation of the bull market. If we look at the macro price action, anything under this horizontal line is going to be our bear market lows. This is our bear market accumulation phase. When we broke back above the level in October 2023, that is when we officially entered a official bull run. And we can see the bull run has been lasting now since October, about seven months, and we have been in this strong uptrend ever since. This uptrend diagonal trend line is not only a representation of the bull run, but it is an expression of the uptrend over the last seven months. And therefore, if we remain above its uptrend, we are going to be macro bullish from a trend-based perspective. If we look at it from a structural perspective, if we want to see a continuation upwards, we do need to remain above our prior low point. And now again, like we said already, we have now created a higher low and we'll come back and discuss this in the short term. But currently we do need to remain above that initial low. A drop below that initial low will result in a correction to retest that yearly uptrending point. So until we see that, we are still consolidating within this high time frame channel. And this high time frame channel is going to be a neutral consolidation as it is again horizontal. But with all horizontal consolidations, the direct direction of entry into the channel is generally the direction of exit from the channel. So there's a slight bullish bias in terms of the structural consolidation we have here based on market pattern theory. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? What does it mean for the macro price action? 
So we're looking for continuations downwards to retest this level and inevitable breakdowns. We do need to now drop below this prior low. Since again, this is going to be our higher low. Our higher low is also going to be a short term bearish trigger point, meaning a loss of the higher low will result in the next leg down for Bitcoin to retest our prior and our initial low point. This is going to be acting as a potential area of support for Bitcoin, but would be again a significant sign of weakness as the $60,000 level of support will have been lost for the second time if that occurs and that would increase the likelihood of a loss of that initial low. So for the bears to actually step back in here what they need to do is they need to break the price underneath that 60,800 level until then the bulls have complete control of the price action. When we look at the price action within horizontal ranges okay when we're looking from downswings to upswings, when we find support on the range low or resistance on the range high and we bounce from those levels, the probable direction is in the opposite direction of which the price action moved towards that resistance or support. And therefore, since we are bouncing from this level, we do have a probable direction upwards into our next major area of resistance. We'll discuss that in one moment. If we zoom out to the bullish case scenario on the macro, for a macro continuation upwards, we need to see exactly the same thing. This is going to be our low, this is going to be our high. For a macro continuation upwards, we need to break above that high point sitting at 73.8k. So let's now jump into the short term and discuss what is happening in context. Where is Bitcoin going next? What the price action is doing? So here is the short term price action. We can see we have got that uptrend. We have got that initial low. We have got that higher low. We have got our horizontal level of support, which we are currently retesting. This is at the price point of 62,800 to 62,500, this horizontal box. If we take a measured move analysis of the parallel channel we had right over here, okay, applying the width of that channel, or should I say the depth of the channel to the perceived breakout point, we can see the measured move target of this breakout is sitting at around about this 64,200 region, which lines up with this local top of that prior move at around 64,500. This is going to be the initial target for Bitcoin, provided we remain above this high point. So this lower high, provided the lower high remains, our next target on Bitcoin is 64,500. If we break above 64,500, that is when we're looking for a higher time frame move to retest that $67,000 region. Again, the $67,000 region is a double confluence point between the midline, which is the dash line, okay, the exact center point from the range high to the range low, as well as the area of neckline resistance that we retested twice before rejecting and continuing back down to that 60k region. So again, guys, if we break above here, which is very likely since we are holding support above these two areas of confluence, we are likely to see a retest of 67. If we break over 67, we are going to likely see a continuation to our range high. The reason I say that, again, 67 is a neckline of resistance. Not only is the neckline of resistance broken, facilitating a move to the next level of resistance, but above the midline of the channel, we enter the bullish portion of the horizontal consolidation. So it is looking quite bright if we are able to get above there. Now, with all of this bullish news, that doesn't again take the bearish scenario off the table. While we remain underneath this level, the likely and or well, not sure I say likely, but the possibility for a correction lower is still on the cards. That probability is only significantly in favor of the continuation upwards if we break above 67. 67 is really going to that bullish number. We break above there, it's a very high chance we push up and a very low chance we ever see that 60K region again, at least on the short term, not on the macro. You know, you know we could come back there in months from now, but on the short term, at least within this range, it's unlikely we retest that 60K region again while we remain in this horizontal channel formation. So that is the short term guys, those are levels and targets you need to be paying attention to and that is the context of the higher time frame implications this current consolidation can have. So let's now move over to the macro charts. The total cryptocurrency markup is still looking pretty good guys. Again, we are holding above our major trigger point 
on the macro chart. This is an incredibly, incredibly important level. A loss of this level would be catastrophic for the cryptocurrency market. Remember, the total cryptocurrency market cap is a representation of the cryptocurrency market as a whole, not just Bitcoin and altcoins, cryptocurrency market as a whole. If we are applying the same context to what we did on Bitcoin, again, this is when we entered the bull run for the cryptocurrency market in October, end of October, 2023. This was bear market, low accumulation. This was the bear market, our bull market, our accumulation, our bull market, okay? This is when we entered it. So we've been in an aggressive uptrend for the last seven months. This is going to be our all-time high trigger point, meaning generally from historical data, when we break above the dead cap bounce high, we'll show you, this is the prior dead cap bounce high. When we break above that prior dead cap bounce high, we generally see continuations to new highs on Bitcoin. So this is going to be the trigger point for continuations to new high points, which is a new all-time high in 2024. Now, what we don't see is when we break above that point, we never actually see a close on the monthly scale below that point again. So a monthly close below that level would be catastrophic, it would tell us that we have seen significant weakness at this stage of the cycle that we have not seen in the last four bull runs, okay? That'll be very, very bad. Now, on the weekly scale, of course, we obviously do not want to close a weekly candle underneath here either, because that would indicate, again, there is a degree of weakness, which increases the likelihood of a monthly candle close. So the most ideal scenario is we remain above this level indefinitely. A weekly or monthly candle close below here would, again, tell us we are potentially entering a macro downtrend. This could indicate the top is in, the bull market is coming to an end. It would be very, very bad for it to occur. Until that happens, this is a launching pad for a new all-time high, as we have seen in historical patterns. This is a nice, at the moment, support resistance flip of a yearly long neckline of resistance. Moving over to the Bitcoin chart on the higher time frame, we can see a very similar thing occurring over here. The difference with this is we are retesting the initial 2021 high as a potential support area. So again, this is going to be a yearly level of resistance. This was our prior top, our 2021 top. This was our deviation over the high. So when we look at horizontal levels, we had deviation. The exact moment this candle broke under here was marking the top for 2021 high as a mark this as deviation from the prior high. And thus we entered a macro downtrend. At the moment, we do not have deviation from the current or prior high point. This is still going to be a re test of that respective support level. So we are looking for, again, a support resistance flip from here for a macro continuation upwards. Again, weekly and monthly candle closes under this level would be bad and could send Bitcoin into a macro downtrend. But until it happens, we are very much macro bullish and expecting that bull run trend to continue. Moving over to the altcoin market, guys, again, we are seeing some potential signs for a parabolic rally for altcoins which could be starting within the next few weeks, okay? If we look historically, the altcoin market has had a six-point method, six-point six pattern. The pattern goes point one, two, three, four, five, and six being the top. Point one is going to be the dead cap bounce high of the prior bull run. The bull run, the drop, the dead cap bounce high, the rejection. The dead cap bounce high is point number one. Point number two is the bear market resistance. Again, anything under point number two is bear market accumulation levels. Point number three is the initiation of the macro uptrend or what we will call a bull run. We break above point number two and we retest it as support. That is point number three. Point number four is the start of the bull run for altcoins. We start to see altcoins aggressively rally upwards. We see some altcoins overperform, some altcoins underperform, but overall, we start to see some altcoins move. Within phase number four, we also see a large correction for altcoins. In this instance, we saw around a 30 odd percent correction for altcoins, but most notably, the correction failed to break a weekly candle underneath the pie cycle midline indicators as circled by the red circle. 
After that, we continue upwards to break number one, and we enter phase number five, which is the bull run or the parabolic phase, eventually marking a point of six as the all time high. If we look at the current structure, we are seeing exactly the same thing. We saw again dead cap bounce high, point number one. Rejection into bear market resistance, point number two. Number three, reclamation of the resistance and a retest. Number four, entrance into the bull market with a retest of the pie cycle midline indicators, failure to break below, expecting continuations through point number one, which is going to be the trigger for a altcoin parabolic season. When you see number one break, that is the trigger for a parabolic season for altcoins expecting to enter point number five. Invalidation is a weekly close underneath the pie cycle midline indicators. That would indicate we are likely going to see an extension downwards and possible invalidation of the parabolic season. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. Catch you guys in the next video on Sunday. See you then.